six years, they have not done anything in our energy sector. It is incompetence of the highest. And I want to say, the decimation of this government doesn't stop with the economy or the energy sector, as they have launched a, a, a war on democracy. In our parliament, they have become so afraid of the opposition, exposing their lies and failures, they persistently try to shut us down. They shut our mics off, when, but we remain resilient. They try to curtail our debates, but we stand strong. They reject our questions, but we keep on demanding answers. They even try to erode the standing orders, but we continue to fight because we will not let our democratic principles die. Citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, together we must fight to save the heart and soul of this nation. The heart and soul of Trinidad and Tobago is our people. Our individual circumstances may differ, but we'll all face the threat of neglect and poor governance by this PNM. Today, neglect is rampant in every constituency. In my own, I have three families who have lost their homes due to quarrying by this government, and, not even, and this government has not even provided a piece of ply to help these families. The days for crumbs from this government is over. No longer must citizens wait five months for grants. No longer must businesses be told they have to make at least a half a million, half $500,000 to obtain an SME support loan. There must be opportunity for all. The people of this nation are worth more than a food basket or a salary grant. The energy sector is worth more than Minister Young's promises. Trinidad and Tobago is worth more than this p and can offer. The People's Revolution, led by the Honorable Kamala Prasad Bisesa, is geared towards giving opportunity for all. She did it between 2010 and 2015, and she will do it again when she returns as the Prime Minister of this country. The People's Revolution will deliver a better day for this nation, because under the house of the rising sun, we have the ideas, we have brilliant individuals, and most of all, we all love our country. I thank you. Thank you, MP Lee. The Prime Minister certainly has us wondering why he's able to negotiate so well for housing discounts. We want to know why can't you do it for our energy sector as well? Our next speaker needs no introduction and probably no microphone. A champion of sports and the development of our youth in Trinidad and Tobago. He served as a member of parliament for Darby O'Mara and minister of sport under the People's Partnership government from 2010 to 2015. And today he serves in the Senate as an opposition senator. His talk show, Dogla Politics, is one of the most popular talk shows in the country today. And you will hear why when he speaks. Please help me welcome to the platform, Senator Anil Roberts. The poor man I Thank you, and my UNC family, good afternoon. I grew up in sport, representing this country for 10 years in swimming and football. Sport generated, developed my discipline, my character, and what I want for my country, my patriotism. Whether it was in primary school with Mrs. Kenny or Mr. Wong, my first football coach, or down at Marlin's pool with Jappy Chi Ping Choco Alloy. Learning how to push yourself and train and knowing that if you worked hard, you will win. And you must fight fairly in a fair competition. And that is what fuels me today. I am not a member of the United National Congress because I like yellow. I do not support Kamala Pasad Bisesa because she's a lovely lady. 
I support Kamala Prasad, Mr. Sand, the United National Congress, because this team is the best team to run Trinidad and Tobago. I believe in fairness and equity. Give Jack the jacket and Jim the gym boots. Kamala Prasad Bisesa has clearly shown by her policies, by her cabinet notes, by her cabinet, by her implementation of policy to, Im to impact the lives of Trinidadians and Tobagonians, that she deserves to be the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. When one believes in sport, one does not respect cheaters. In Trinidad and Tobago, we now have a man who is only elevated to the post of Prime Minister by cheating, by gerrymandering, by a system that was created to uplift such a low-level human being. So we in the UNC, it is our mission to put Kamala, pa Kamala Pasad Bisesa back where she belongs, and she belongs at the helm of our country. Nothing is working in Trinidad and Tobago because the loser that Keith Rowley is, the incompetent, low-character man, the bad father, the bad family man, the lack of creativity, the heartless nature of Rowley has been disseminated and dissipated throughout our country through his cabinet of incompetence. The weaker team is leading because the playing field is not fair. The game is warped. In the United National Congress, you just heard from David Lee. David Lee as a Minister of Energy or Minister of Trade or Minister of Science and Tertiary, wherever you put him, will do a better job than the entire cabinet. If you put Anita Haynes, you will see education. We had Tim Gopi Singh and Fazal Karim. In the Senate, we have Jolene John, where you could put her anywhere. And with the work ethic and the love for people, you would see performance. You see Wade Mark and Rudal Munila, Rudy and Darcing, who love people and love labor and will not disrespect the OWTU, shatter unions, disrespect teachers, and mash up nurses and tell them they don't deserve uniforms. In the United National Congress, you see culture, you see arts. You have three or four doctors in the parliament, plus you have doctors outside who will handle the pandemic in a way to keep you alive, not put a man who could not pass an exam, a druggist, to not only disrespect you, but create a system that you better go to the hospital looking casket sharp because you're bound to death. The United National Congress is not in politics for any game. It's not yellow versus red. It's not Norwich City versus Manchester United. Politics impacts your lives. And unfortunately, the system has been designed to create a loser like Rowley as prime minister. But there's one way to correct the system. There's one way to even the playing field. And that is through people power, through uniting, through understanding that working hard and deserving a job, you should get it. We must not elevate mediocrity like what the PNM has done. They've taken away scholarships and made bursaries. They gave bursaries to senators who could not even finish their degree, even though they got $500,000 and failed. That is what the PNM is. The PNM has a fellow who went in, Fatima, and admits that he didn't know how he got in there, and he couldn't stay in there. And he is shocked that he's a minister. That's what the PNM does. In the United National Congress, across the board, you see brilliance, you see achievement, you see people who rise to the top, whether from local government straight up, who have excelled in their private affairs, and they have the discipline, the wear it all, and the heart to move forward. The United National Congress is the team for Trinidad and Tobago. Nothing works in Trinidad and Tobago now, because the team that is running us is totally incompetent and led by an arrogant man who only wanted and, and coveted the job of Prime Minister to procure without procurement. The mere fact that a man will come into Parliament to legalize Stephen, you should know to get him out of there. What would a man legalize Stephen to do? To protect your money or to thief it? That's what we have, and that's why we are in a complete mess. And as the October Revolution turned into November and December, the revolution continues. The people's revolution will continue until Keith Christopher Rowley is no more. We must wipe him off the political landscape because that's what he deserves. When you cheat, you have no respect for those around you.
Keith Christopher Rowley is like a Lance Armstrong, cheating, taking drugs, performance enhancing, and anybody who brings him out and shows him to be a liar, shows him to tell the untruths, he attacks them and attacks them as thieves and corrupt. We had to wake up this morning to a newspaper that shows us and prints lie after lie after lie. To put down Keith Christopher Rowley after he was obliterated in Tobago to try and do some sanitization on his character and his efficacy as a leader. Well, Guardian Media Limited, you have been unmasked. Tobago has unmasked you. The mass media has been unmasked and the people are moving forward. How did we end up here with Keith Christopher Rowley as Prime Minister? It's due to political blindness. How did an intelligent people become so politically blind? This was not by guess. Dr. Eric Williams said at once that he was the fourth fast brightest man in the world. I think he lied. He was probably the brightest. Because he created a cheating system called the PNM, controlled the EBC, affected the opposition, kept the opposition splintered at all times for the last 60 years in order that a mediocre leader who goes to be at the helm of the PNM will gerrymander their way into the office of prime minister. What this does is ensure that performance doesn't matter. Bastio Pande said performance beat old talk, but the cheaters blew out the performance and put back the gerrymanderers because they control the independent institutions. This is why we are blind. It is well designed. You ask yourself, how can such a creative, brilliant population be so politically blind? It is because the system was designed to keep us politically blind. What are the tools that they use? In Trinidad, they use race. How we fit is not how we party. How we vote is not how we party. Trinidad and Tobago is united except for politics. Why? Because the PNM and Dr. Williams and all levels creates and ensures Geographic discrimination, discrimination by religion, discrimination by people, policy, and division in politics. They make African people feel that if you vote for yellow, if you vote for an Indian, that you are somehow racist or doing something untoward towards your group of people. That is the biggest fallacy ever perpetrated on a Caribbean island and has us in this mess that we are. The media, the second reason we are kept blind is that the media is in the pockets of the PNM. We can see, as you see today, them trying to humanize an inhumane oppressor. They're trying to pretend that he is worthy. Take a picture of him looking calm and sitting down on a chair in his ugly golf shirt. But Rowley, you have been unmasked. You only mind your inside children. Any man who does not mind all his children is not a man. Any man who lies on people is not a man. No amount of mass media Propaganda can continue to keep the people blind. Social media, the United National Congress, the, the checklist, the talks, the virtual meetings, the message is getting out there. The truth is traveling slowly, but it is coming. The truth is that Kamala Prasad Bisesa performed as a prime minister above all else. She performed first and foremost as a mother. She performed with heart love and soul for the people and when we get unblinded when we open our eyes when we do not allow division and dividers to keep us separate when we unite we will certainly open our eyes to politics and remove the pnm from the political landscape of Trinidad. so the united national congress calls on all to thwart the politics of gerrymandering to thwart the politics of cheating, to stop allowing cheaters to prosper. The way we do that is to read, to understand, to get information, and to elect those who care about us. Kamla Pasad Bisesa, in, in her track record, you will see Children Life Fund, love, passion, 153 children's lives saved. You'll see 106 schools built. Some of them still that were left incomplete are left by the heartless, cold-hearted 
Keith Christopher Rowley. You would have seen $133 million a year for textbooks. You would have seen laptops to 100,000 children. You would have seen gate increase from 400 million to 800 million. Sport budget from 10 million to 140 million. MIC centers, NESC centers, baby milk grant. You would have seen VAT refunds being paid on time. 55,000 jobs created. The energy sector booming. Trinidad and Tobago safe. Con when there's flooding, you would see Kamala Prasad be out there, touching people, talking with people, making sure her ministers ensure that people get served. How is Kamala Prasad Bisesa not the prime minister? Because we have allowed cheaters to prosper. Tobago has shown the way. Tobago has removed the blinders. Tobago is 94% Afro-Tobagonian, and they've rejected the race politics. They've rejected the incompetence of Keith Christopher Rowley. They've rejected the man who says he's from Mason Hall. They dug up his navel string and pelt it out in the Atlantic Ocean. It's now sunk down and two fish fighting. And that must transcend into Trinidad. It must come from Scorpion and Hague Street in Carnage, straight through to Bagatelle, Dago Martin, up and through Lavanti, Port of Spain South, into Sour Barataria, St. Joseph, Tunapuna, up in Matlot, Maloney, Malabar, down in Enterprise, across to San Fernando, East and West, into La Brea, and into Matlot, across the board, down to Point Fourteen, and in Mayaro, Cedrus, and all across Trinidad and Tobago. The politics of race must be gone from Trinidad and Tobago. This is why nothing works. A PNM cannot tell you one policy that they did, one thing that they did to achieve happiness for anybody. They come to tax you. It's the most corrupt government in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. The Inez Gate, instead of the Guardian showing us, Rowley, why did you not fill out your Form B? Rowley, why did you not declare the personal benefit? Rowley, what is the problem with you and Alan Waller? Rowley, you're a Prime Minister. Why aren't you negotiating for house. Rowley, why did you procure? Rowley, what about Bridgman's? Rowley, what about the HCC contract? Rowley, why did you lie about Delsigate? Rowley, what's the deal with Smallpin? Rowley, what did you do in Houston? You come to sit down there to make a clung look like he is something. Shame on you, Guardian. And I leave you with this to all those who would like to facilitate the cheaters of the PNM, including in my UNC ranks, because division means that you are a PNM. When you divide the UNC, when you divide the opposition, you are a PNM. So put on your red jersey, put on your ugly golf shirt, and go and play golf with Rowley. If you divide and you do not support the captain, you are not on the team. You are not on Team Trinidad and Tobago. So all those who pretend and look for excuses to not be united, you are PNM. Go and join Balize House, the only building that is rising to the sky. 120 million. Why did the Guardian not ask Rowley? But where you get the steel? Where you get the concrete? Oh, they didn't really sell all them raffle tickets. Where all that money going? Is that a land date, Balize House going up, that you get contract and drop gravel here? Is that what we are doing? But the reason for this is, and why you keep thinking you can attack Kamala Passad, Mr. San, let me put all on notice. Small, big, big head. Feel they nice, feel they bright, feel they have power. The next set of people who attack Kamala Prasad, we said they have to face the UNC team. Starting with me coming down the line, Jillian John, Wade Mark, Senator Lida, Jayanti Lachmidal, Mooney Lal, Inda Singh, all across the 19, and all councillors. Because Kamala Prasad, we said, is our leader, and she deserves to be Prime Minister. Her performance is there. But some people feel it's easier. And I read just as I finish off here from the Prince Niccolo Machiavelli from page 78. Why is it possible for a hater, an abuser, a man who instills fear on the population to rise above a lady who ruled with love and care? And it's right here in this book. Upon this question arises whether it is better to be loved than feared or feared than loved. It may be answered that one should wish to be both. But because it is difficult to unite them in one person, it is much safer to be feared than loved. And that's what we must remove. We must remove the politics of fear, the politics of shouting, the politics of lies. If you want to shout, shout from the mountaintop with facts. Shout about policy. Shout about position. Shout about jobs. Shout about safety. Don't shout to defend your lying thief himself. Keep rolling. The people are on to you. Tobago has unmasked you. When your own dog bites you, you're well bitten, Rowley. God bless. 
UNC Revolution. You know, when Marshall Montano sing like a boss, I feel he had Senator Roberts in mind, you know. When we ask Senator Roberts to bring the fire, he never disappoints. And you're right, we must even the playing field with the power of people, because the power of people will always be greater than the people in power. While the PNM is about mediocrity, the UNC is about meritocracy. Ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture in our program, we'd like to pause for a cause to bring on some entertainment from a talented son of the soil, a UNC stalwart, a UNC counselor. And I really wish I could be talking about myself, but I can't sing. We have too much rain today and my district floods. He is known as the Gunga Ghana man, the man who take one tune and carry it across Trinidad and Tobago and the world. Please welcome to the People's Revolution Rally, Councillor Dubraj Pasad. Ghana me raja dubari, sunalo me ra dushmani. Kaan kolo me ra gana ko, mai hu te ra guru gyan. सब परिवार कुचुर मनावे सब परिवार कुचुर मनावे गुंगा गाना गुंगा गाना गुंगा गाना गावे गुंगा गाना गावे गुंगा गाना गावे गुंगा गाना गावे सब परिवार कुचुर मनावे सब परिवार
Press like if you like that performance and be sure to share on all our social media platforms. This is the People's Revolution. Our next speaker was awarded the Shikonia Medal, Silver of the Order of the Trinity, for his contribution to trade unionism for the year 2005. As a former educator, trade unionist, and a parliamentarian for the last 11 years, please welcome a true fighter of the people, your member of parliament for Kuva South, Rudranath Indar Singh. <laughs> Thank you very much, the Honorable Political Leader of the United National Congress, Kamala Pasad Bisesa, my brothers and sisters of our great party at all levels, Trinidad and Tobago, a pleasant good evening. The United National Congress is on the march, and the People's Revolution is moving through and sweeping through every nook and cranny of Trinidad and Tobago. And for the last six years, uh, the most incompetent prime minister and incompetent government uh, has waged war on the people of Trinidad and Tobago. They have undermined uh, the constitution of this country and they have undermined the democracy of this country. And last uh, Monday on the 6th of December, the people of Tobago waged and declared war on the people of the government uh, of Dr. P. Crowley. My brothers and sisters uh, of Trinidad and Tobago, six years uh, of poverty, six years of hardship, six years of pain and trauma and suffering uh, and the destruction of stable families, uh, Six years of gate being rolled back. Six years of potholes to the point where Trinidad and Tobago can now gain a global award for the country with the most potholes in the world. Six years of bullying. Six years of arrogant and condescending leadership of Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, Trinidad and Tobago. How much more can a people take of a government that continues to bully and suppress the voices of the people of this country? My brothers and sisters, uh, today we must never forget that this is a government that promised much to the labor movement. In fact, they promised milk and honey they promise the moon and the stars. You must never forget, you must recollect that on the eve of the elections of 2015, they signed a memorandum of understanding and they told the workers, they told the people of this country that we will sign your collective agreements all outstanding. We will review the labor legislation of this country we will grow, we will diversify, we will create jobs, and Trinidad and Tobago will be a better place for the citizenry and the workers to exist in. But after six years, the labor movement, the ordinary people of this country, they have been assaulted, they have been brutalized, they have been deceived, they have been lied to by a government on a consistent basis, my brothers and sisters. And today, this is why the people are rallying back. The people are joining the revolution to push back and send a clear message to the government of Prime Minister Dr. Rowley under the leadership of Kamala Pasad Bisesa and the United National Congress. And as we continue on this glorious journey, we must remember that silence is not an option. 
Our voices must continue to be heard. We are at the end, or we are at the end, moving towards the end of the year 2021. And as 2022 dawns upon us, we must unify. We must stand collective to pursue a monumental struggle, a people's struggle that will see us pounding the streets and pavements of Trinidad and Tobago to change the democracy of this country and to send a very clear message to Dr. Rowley and his undemocratic and minority government. Time is longer than twine and the writing is on the wall, my brothers and sisters. And today, I want to seize the opportunity to speak to the labor movement, the rank and file. I also want to seize the opportunity to speak to the leadership also, because uh, we must send a clear message to a politically wounded prime minister and a minority government that if uh, there is no carnival on the horizon, Keith Rowley, and his PNM bunch will play all mass with you in 2022. And that all mass will continue with joblessness, high food prices, poverty, mayhem, and chaos, my brothers and sisters. It will be war and tyranny of uh, will soar to higher heights of epic and frightening proportions in this country. And this is what the workers, this is what the ordinary people and the citizenry of this country must pay attention to in 2022. We must not allow Rowley and his government to get away. They cannot continue on the pathway of destroying humble homes, humble families who are surviving, finding it difficult to survive under their failed policies, my brothers and sisters. And this is why I signal to all of us that 2022 must be a year of unprecedented and unparalleled mobilization. It must be a struggle of eternal vigilance to push back Rowley and his incompetent and corrupt bunch, my brothers and sisters. And I say this to you because they have continued to promise and they have failed to deliver. You must never forget in the parliament of this country, in the last budget presentation, Prime Minister Rowley Colm Imbert, who has now emerged to be the most lying and deceitful Minister of Finance in this country. And Dial Singh, Terence Dial Singh, told the nurses and the Trinidad and Tobago Registered Nurses Association that by the end of December, they will solve the regularization of all nurses who are on contracts and the implication for their pension arrangements. December 2021 is coming close to an end and we have not heard a voice, not a note from Rowley, not a note from Embert, not a note from the Al Singh, and that is why I am saying there must be unprecedented mobilization and vigilance in 2022, my brothers and sisters. Then they told you, in, the, in this said budget too, that there will be a settlement of all outstanding public sector negotiations. This was promised since 2015 when they signed that joint memorandum of understanding. And in six years of government, what has Rowley, what has Imbert, what has the failed ministers of labor delivered to the working class and people of Trinidad and Tobago. Kamla Passat Bisasa and her People's Partnership Government delivered people-centered development and improved 
the quality of life and standard of living of every worker in this country when she had the tenacity and fortitude to settle 135 negotiations, create 56,000 jobs, and find the money to pay over $5 billion in back pay. That is what leadership is about, my brothers and sisters. And this is why I continue to tell you, you cannot trust them, because in six years, if they cannot come and account to you and tell you how many negotiations they settle, what will change in 2022, my brothers and sisters? And that is why you must understand the importance of unparalleled mobilization and ensuring that there is eternal vigilance to push back this government and demand what is your pound of flesh in the context of your contribution to nation building and the development of this country. I want to also warn the labor movement, and that is why you must join this glorious struggle, this people's struggle, my brothers and sisters. They promised local government workers in 2019 a daily paid contributory pension plan. That was on the eve of the THA election then. And now I do not expect it to become a reality. And that is why it is only electioneering and gimmickry from Rowley and his lying bunch. You must never, never trust them because they speak with forked tongues at all points in time in terms of their communicating to you, my brothers and sisters. It is lies upon lies. And this is why we must understand that you are existing on 2012 salaries in 2021 and going into 2022. Joblessness will be the order of the day. We in the opposition, we have credible information that their cabinet appointed reports as it relates to Wasa and Lake Asphalt and the port of Port of Spain that has been thrown through the political window. In fact, one cabinet minister who touts himself to be a man of honesty and integrity in the highest traditions, he told the Minister of Public Utilities, and I challenge the Minister of Public Utilities to deny what I'm saying. He said, why are you wasting your time with the restructuring of WASA? Let us all sell it off and let us make money. That is the, the honest politician telling the cabinet colleagues what we must do with WASA and what we must do with the port and what we must do with Lake Asphalt, my brothers and sisters. That is why you cannot trust them. And that is why you must join this great struggle and journey to push back and be part of the people's revolution, my brothers and sisters. And I want to warn you, also, with the Trinidad and Tobago Revenue Authority, there will be no transferring of jobs. There will be no security of tenure. They want to dec decimate the Public Services Association. They want no collective bargaining. They want no recognized majority unions in the workplace, my brothers and sisters. And uh, what they are saying is that you will have the opportunity, that is, custom officers and Board of Inland Revenue Workers to transfer into the Trinidad and Tobago Revenue Authority. You have specialized jobs in Customs and Excise and the Board of Inland Revenue. Where will you get these jobs? When you are red circle, it is really retrenchment and there will be no opportunity for you in the Trinidad and Tobago Revenue Authority. They have no respect for collective bargaining. They have no respect for recognized maturity unions and the decent work agenda of which Trinidad and Tobago is a signatory to based on our membership in the International Labor Organization, my brothers and sisters. 
So I want to tell you, it is lies. It is one of Kenneth trusting Rowley and his incompetent and visionless bunch, my brothers and sisters. And today, today I want to tell you that your party, your leader, has been on the side of the people. You witness unparalleled and unprecedented people-centered development which improved your quality of life and standard of living for six years, for five years between 2010 and 2015. And we are committed under her leadership to the pursuit of peace, brother, and justice on behalf of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And that is why, that is why I tell you this evening that if you know that you have a leader you can trust, if you know you have a party that has delivered to you, if you know that you benefited from people-centered development between 2010 and 2015, the time is now. The time is now to ensure that we continue the people's revolution under Kamala Pasad Bisesa and our great party, long live the United National Congress. I thank you. Got to find a solution to this pollution. Oh, got to find a solution to this pollution. Yeah. Thank you very much, MP Indar Singh, for a very fiery contribution. And I heard the trade unionist in him coming out in his presentation. And while he was speaking, a Burgess of mine sent me a message and he said, you know, you're talking about wage negotiations, but we have to be careful. He said the prime minister is definitely interested in negotiating, maybe not wages, discounts, but maybe we'll hear about that a little later on. Ladies and gentlemen, Keith Rowley and his band of merry men are the only bunch who could put this country through labor pains and deliver nothing. I'd just like to pause for a second and remind you all that we are streaming live on TV6, TV Jaggerty, More 104.7 FM, and Radio Jaggerty 102.7 FM. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker. Our next speaker is a man who needs no introduction. He is a true UNC stalwart and has always stood up to the PNM. In fact, the PNM trembles when they, when they only with the mention of his name. And the more they fight, the more he would push back. He is a firebrand in the parliament and on the platform, and in a few short moments, you would see why. Our next speaker is known as the Lion of Oropuch East. Please welcome to the platform, MP for Oropuch East, Dr. Rudal Munilal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever heard a cage bird sing? There's a time and a place for everything. Whoa, 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 whoa. And do you believe in the joy it brings? Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. And if you have the lion now, a few moments ago when I saw Anil, I, I thought that was the UNC Ninja Turtle. Which is with his blindfold on. Well done, Anil. And all speakers before. Political leader, the very honorable Mrs. Kamla Pusad Bisesa, parliamentary colleagues, members of the national executive, uh, officers of the party, brothers and sisters, it's a pleasure to be here on this UNC rally day when we speak to a mass uh, audience of persons through radio, television, and our social media platforms. While we are few because of our health regulations, live, we are many, and there are thousands and thousands listening and viewing at this moment across Trinidad and Tobago and the world, and we welcome and thank all of you for your support. Brothers and sisters, today, Trinidad and Tobago, our society is in decay. The economy has collapsed long before COVID. They have mismanaged the COVID crisis, Terence Dialsing will be remembered forever 
as a political undertaker. He is the grim reaper of our time. Today I saw Keith Rowley on the front page of a newspaper looking as if he's on vacation, as always. And he said, and I quote, I am concerned that the acceptance of 20 to 30 people dying every day and that being accepted as the norm. But Rowley, your policies created this horrible reality. 436 people died in three weeks. It is you and your policies that created that. So don't blame anybody and talk about norm. You are responsible. The PNM is on its last legs. Tobago rejected them wholesale. And I tell you, the people of Trinidad will not be as kind as the people of Tobago. The writing is on the wall, but they cannot see it because they thief the wall too. Rowley was beaten in his own house. A defeated PNM is in Tobago. We await them in Trinidad. And I want to say for the record that a defeat of the PNM anywhere is a victory for democracy everywhere. A defeat for the PNM anywhere is a victory for democracy everywhere. The bully was brought down to size. The bully got a bloody nose on Monday, but their autocratic and dictatorship continues. This week we saw the very obscene sight of Fitzgerald Hines at a press conference, flanked by the, the Deputy Commissioner of Police, Jacob, and by the head of the prison service, Pullman. Hines declared on that media conference, he said, we are the PNM. Today I asked Jacob and Pullman, are you the PNM? Are you fan holding members of the PNM? Because Heinz has compromised these officers. Those constitutional officers have been compromised in the most crude and naked way by Fitzgerald Heinz, suggesting that they are PNM. Brothers and sisters, they decimated the economy as the MP for Oropooch West spoke last Friday in the parliament on an important motion on the economy. While they destroy the economy, Rowley and his clan marches on merrily. In fact, Rowley was hiding from Parliament last Friday. He could not be seen by the people. He was in Tobago, where things are looking good for him. Not electorally, but real estate in Tobago is looking good, as MP Saddam Hussein exposed recently. You can get, you can get private, exclusive, upscale townhouses there for almost 50% discount. It is looking good for Rowley. Contact the Rowley Real Estate Services Limited. When all of that is taking place in Trinidad and Tobago, brothers and sisters, we are without a commissioner of police. No one to authorize the interception of uh, calls and emails and communication in the event of tracking money laundering, terrorist activities and so on. No one to fight corruption. No one to grant firearm users license to deserving citizens to protect themselves. Nobody to even grant FUL to kill pig in Tobago. The Trinidad Tobago Police Service is headless. They are headless. They come with new crime plans now. Walk around the savannah to say no to crime. Stuart Young say he's joining that. To walk around the savannah. Over the years we have heard of rolling plans. Today we hear of a walking plan. They say walk fast to avoid bandits. Don't walk with cash to avoid bandit and walk around the savannah. So sneakers fighting bullets. I would like to tell the policemen, walking against crime is for citizens. Citizens must stand up and march and protest. Policemen must put on boots, not sneakers. That is the point. Snipping, sipping snow cone around the savannah is not a crime plan. That is not a crime plan. Your job is to prevent and detect crime. Now I want to go quickly to the matter I came to talk to you about. Involving a bombshell of sorts. Even I jumped it. Alan Warner and a blasting permit in Tobago. Now I want to tell you, Keith Rowley admitted in Parliament recently that one Alan Warner, a businessman from Tobago, is his friend. He admitted that. Let me say at the beginning, we have no problem with friends. Everybody deserves friends, including Prime Minister. 
Everybody deserves to have friends. Our problem is when high office holders attempt to use their office for the personal benefit of friends and family. That is our problem in a manner that is unethical and unlawful. That is our problem. We have no problem with Mr. Warner, Alan Warner, rece receiving any benefit for the, from the state to which he's lawfully entitled as a businessman. Today, I ask the Prime Minister and Stuart Young, I address you, whether you are aware of any high government official who brought pressure to bear and sought to bully the police service to provide a blasting permit to Warner Construction in Tobago to conduct his business. You see, brothers and sisters, the high government official asks the police, what keeping you back? Why Warner cannot get a license to do blasting? Let me just explain that for people who don't know. When you're in the quarrying business, you apply to national security and the TTPS for what is called a blasting permit to blow up. So you apply for that and the TTPS in conjunction with the Occupational Safety and Health Agency undertake a lot of reports and studies and you get this license, brothers and sisters. Do you know Warner Construction, our information suggests that on 9th March 2000, 2020, Warner Construction made an application to OSHA for the renewal of their blasting permit, which had expired two years before. Two years, huh? A request was made by OSHA to OSHA. The request now was made to the police in July 2020 to do background checks on persons. Because if you are given license for explosive and so on, you have to do what's called vetting on people. So you, you are sure there's not some terrorist himself you're giving that to. So they requested, the police requested documents and went through a process. They were doing checks. An inspection was conducted by o, the OSHA inspector and a report was produced. Brothers and sisters, the police report, the OSHA report suggested that there were breaches. There were serious problems with the application and Warner Construction could not immediately get that permit, that approval. What happens next is phenomenal. The OSHA followed up with Warner to see if they can identify the problems and solve it. A report was sent to Warner Construction in September 2020. The OSHA scheduled another inspection and so on, and this was going on to deal with breaches, outstanding measures like noise pollution, management of all type of um, uh, disposable items, uh, chemicals, and so on. In October 16, 2020, the TTPS submitted background checks on the persons involved and so on. Thereafter, in and around that time, there was a sustained prolonged and obscene bullying by two high-ranking members of the PNM literally involved in influence peddling to get the TTPS through the Office of Commissioner to issue a permit. Okay, the Commissioner's Office did issue a permit. Did issue a permit after a sustained amount of bullying only to discover after that the permit was issued erroneously. It was done contrary to policy where there's a committee in the police called a blast and advisory committee, but a committee had to make a recommendation. So the permit given was invalid, so to speak. It was not correct. Thereafter, a series of events took place in which today we are not sure that that unlawful permit was ever withdrawn. It may not have been withdrawn. So today we ask Mr. Jacob to tell us whether that permit was withdrawn or whether it is still in effect having admitted himself that that permit was given contrary to procedure and contrary to policy. He had revealed that himself. Was that license withdrawn? He requested information himself. Did you get it? Because our information is no, no, uh, no uh, information and evidence was collected. Did the TTPS cover up? That issue of granting erroneously, unlawfully, illegally, a permit to Warner Construction, did they cover up that or not? Because we are dealing with the friend of the Prime Minister. Brothers and sisters, when the advisory committee met in November 2020, they said they will not approve that uh, um, permit for Warner Construction because of continuing problems with defects, with problems in the application and so on and so forth. Notably, in the request, it was identified 
It was identified that Warner Construction made withdrawals from the government powder magazine in Tobago in May and October 2019. Now, let me just break that down. Eh? When their permit expired in 2018, they got no permit until the end of 2020. When we believe it was wrong, erroneous. But they were taking gunpowder, uh, powder, explosive elements from the police in Tobago. They were taking that in 2019, January and October. The TTPS then undertook an investigation into Warner Construction for handling unlawfully explosives. To this day, I asked Mr. Jacob, who sat next to Heinz when I spoke earlier, to indicate the status of the police investigation into the illegal withdrawal of explosives by Warner Construction without a permit. That is explosive. I hope that this, I hope that this matter is not swept under the carpet as a result of Mr. Warner, Alan Warner, being a friend of the Prime Minister. And Stuart Young, I come to you now. Anil Roberts calls him something they use in golf. A small pin, I think. As when you tee off at a party. And Stuart Young, I ask you, were you the same Young who was texting the police and bullying them? What is keeping back with the license? Why are you not granting the license? The OSHA is ready with the report. Why are you not get All the time in Parliament, they're accusing us of being friends with contractors. So I want to ask Stuart Young today, who is Anna Alan Warner to you? Is that Alan Mamu? Tell your Mamu. Alan Mamu. <laughs> who is he to you? That you are texting police to ask what is the status of a blasting report? What, what the hell you have with the blasted, blasting permit? Stuart Young must answer whether or not he was bullying the police as Minister of National Security for a permit for Alan Warner in Tobago. While they were trying to get that, they quarreled with, with Gary Griffith for giving license to people and so on. They're investigating. The same Alan Warner, the same Alan Warner, high government official calling the police to tell him, what about the FUL application for Alan Warner? He going and do business and beat him in Trinidad. What about he own? And more than that, telling the police, all well, you prepare that hustle, do faster. As we say, jaldi, jaldi. They say, do fast. Do fast. And if it finish, I could pass and collect it. Could you imagine that? Politicians, high government official, telling the police, if you are if you license, I'm um, ready. Tell me now, I'll pass and collect it. I could deliver. And they accuse us. They accuse us for six long years about friendly with contractors and so on, brothers and sisters. And having partner, this partner and that partner. And this is what they do. Stuart Young must answer what business you have with Alan Warner and why are you representing him to the TTPS. I asked Mr. Jacob to disclose as well whether any blasting permit was granted after October 12th to now. October 14th to now. October 14th was the judgment that effectively made the, the acting commissioner null and void. October 14th. I asked Mr. Jacobs to tell us whether any organization, entity, company, or individuals have received blasting permits or FUL license permits to carry firearm since there has been no commissioner of police in place to undertake that as required by law. Mr. Jacob must tell us who gave authority to give out FUL to, do, to give permit to blow up Pisa Tobago. Who gave permit, if at all? Clear the air on this matter, Mr. Jacob. And I asked Rowley in closing, I have a few minutes here. Are you aware as well? This is why I spoke about this need of Rowley to get control of police, to get control of law enforcement. Is Keith Rowley aware of the naked grab for political control by his ministers and himself? Is he aware that his government spent $35 million on a British legal and investigation team to target political opponents? Which high-ranking government official sent members of the TTPS to London to meet with this British team on the instruction, yes, Senator Mark, on the instruction that you are meeting them to concentrate on Anil Roberts and Rudal Munilal and no one else? Now, I don't know what business they have with me and Anil. We are generally very quiet, polite, gentle, calm citizens. I don't know what business they have with us. But they're instructing the police. 
who to investigate, who not to investigate, who to concentrate on spending $35 million when the police say we don't have that kind of money, you know. We don't have money to waste, you know. They say, hold on, hold on. A next man who pretend to be a finance man, he said, we'll show you how to get it. We'll move it from the Ministry of Finance to the TTPS, and then you will go behind the back, behind the back scenes there, behind the curtain. You spend it to the pay the British people. Because the man say, he say, go look bad if the Ministry of Finance pay in England. TTPS have to pay it. So they don't have no, no money to buy book, paper, and pencil for police, water, fix police station, change a bulb, but $35 million to Britain to investigate their political opponents. That is where we are, brothers and sisters. That is exactly where we are. So today, Rowley has to answer. He has not answered yet on whether WPC Marshall visited anyone at the diplomatic center and for what reasons did she go there when she's involved in sensitive police investigations regarding persons known to be recruited by the former commissioner? We have asked that before, they have not. WPC Marshall, the only WPC Rowley should talk to is Kami Robinson Regis. I do need WPC, no others. So, brothers and sisters, these are the questions I leave with you. I thank all of you for your attention. It's a wonderful day of rally. We miss the 40,000 of you at Aranguez. But I can close my eyes like Anil and visualize the 40,000 of you listening and viewing. Thank you and may God bless you all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever heard a cage bird sing? There's a time and a place for everything. Whoa, 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 whoa. And do you believe in the joy it brings? When your eyes are open and you can't see it, 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 can't see it. Well, that was it. Thank you, Dr. Munilal. You are certainly correct. More questions and answers. One wonders if peer pressure is alive and well in the house of the PNM. Our next speaker, in addition to her 25 years of corporate management experience, she is a woman with a lifetime of service to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. She has always been on the ground with them. Throughout her years of service, one thing has always remained certain is her respect and belief in the United National Congress and its capability to transform Trinidad and Tobago into the first world nation we are destined to become. She has served as a UNC government minister previously and today she proudly serves as a UNC senator. Please welcome the indomitable Senator Charlene John. Yeah. Have you ever heard a cage bird sing? There's a time and a place for everything. Whoa, 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 whoa. And do you believe in the joy it brings? When your eyes are open and you can't see everything that's around you. Separating friends from 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 Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. As Dr. Munilal just said, we are feeling the Aranguez vibe. We are feeling the people. Honorable political leader, Mrs. Kamla Pasad Bisesa, our brothers and sisters, members of the viewing and listening public, members of the media. After the elections of August 2020, our political leader did not allow us to lick any time to lick our wounds or wallow in self-pity because notwithstanding the results of that election we knew after the 10th and the 11th nothing would have changed because Rowley had shown us who he is from 2010 to 2015 and we in the UNC believed him nothing has changed and with Rowley as Prime Minister nothing will ever change for Tobago it took 21 years Trinidad don't let it take another day Rowley has to go. On the night of December 6th, the night of the THA elections, I was invited to appear on a television program. And when I, I mean, I listened and I know my people, from my accent, I hope you know I'm Tobagonian. People usually ask from Jamaican. And that's fine, but I'm Tobagonian. And I remarked, I said, tonight, Tobago will speak. 
and I hope Trinidad will listen. Tobago voted unequivocally and unambiguously to get rid of Keith Christopher Rowley and his politics of vindictiveness, his politics of, politics of divisiveness, his politics of hate, and his politics of spite. They repudiated that. When now Chief Secretary Farley Chavez Augustine was giving his speech in recognition of the results of the election, he spoke about his vision of one Tobago, of linking and uniting Tobago, and he spoke about having a covenant with the people. He spoke in biblical terms. Rowley, on the other hand, in his unrelentless quest to become Prime Minister, spoke of his journey from Mason Hall to Whitehall via some cemetery in Lekito, where some man who put him out at some place lived to regret it. And then Rowley proceeded to run the most divisive vindictive, polarizing, and useless government in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. Brothers and sisters, after 21 years of interrupt, uninterrupted, I'm talking about Tobago, PNM government, and $40 billion burning a hole in their pocket, those who have managed the THA for all of those years have nothing to show and went to the electorate with a green avocado. But Tobago, is in my heart. Tobago is who I am. They ran them as I expected them to run them because enough was enough. Even when Nick Rowley, as um, Senator Roberts said, his neighbor's string is, is buried, the PDP's Ian Pollard, with 1,494 votes, got that amount against the PNM, 807. So he told you, again, I'm going to quote a good Tobago colloquialism, and Dr. Um, I'm sorry, Senator Roberts said it, when your own dog bites you, you will bite. They run Rowley out of Mason Hall. So when the, the election of, six, of, um, of January 20, 2021 delivered an, um, a result of six seats for the PDP and six seats for the PNM, the people of Tobago, they were saying something. You know, in Tobago, we have a lot, we have a lot of religion and people like to go to church so when you see that you know as a tobagonia will say the lord is trying to tell you something rowley the lord was trying to tell you something when we're six six you think rowley listening no stick breaking his ears on the 25th we got that result he ran to the parliament on the 19th of february not even a month after because he believed that he floats above the law and he floats above the constitution and there was our leader, as usual, leading the church with the law because she loves the Constitution. As Santa Robert said, why isn't Kamala Prasad be the Prime Minister of Trinidad Tobago? She loves the law. She abides by the law. And she went and she said, the, the standing orders of the THA takes you to the standing order of the House of Representatives because when you don't find the answer there, you go there. And it says that you have to pull straws because no six was bigger than the other six. As a matter of fact, the PDP, very humble. They said, we, we don't want chief secretary. We don't want finance secretary. We will take whatever you give to us. But Rowley had another plan. He went to the, the, the parliament on the 19th of February to change the 12 seats to 15. He advanced that there was, exists no remedy in law. And in piloting his amendment bill, he said, Madam Speaker, I have searched the Tobago House of Assembly up, up, up and down. I have seen no provision here for tossing any coin. I have seen no provision for cutting grass and pulling straws. I have heard it from the radio and the television about having a council of elders, a Robinson Group Crusoe coin toss, a Greybeards Association. Let them run Tobago. All of these, Madam Speaker, are ideas coming from different court quarters. Everything else, Madam Speaker, is good, a good suggestion, a good idea, but it is monkey cocoa in law. That is Rowley talking there. You understand? Because, you know, in the 80s and things, we used to look at a lot of these soul movies. And there was a famous line with Sharp High Washington. He said, car con a con man. That is all they are good for. They talk fast to con, to con you. You know, so for the prime minister, the result of 6-6 six, six was an opportunity for him to flex his political muscles and to take advantage of the Tobago people. He proceeded to direct the pliant EBC to bend and flex and contort themselves even in the face of, se of, clause of section 71 of the Constitution and 71.8 of the Republican Constitution tells us clearly and unambiguously the Commission may regulate its own procedure. And 71.12, in the exercise of its function, under this section, the Commission shall not be subject to the direction or control of any person or authority. That is an independent EBC. But this EBC 
is like butter, it is like putty in Rowley's hand. And they forgot their report of the, their 10th report in 2012, which, which they laid in the parliament. And they said, Tobago, based on our formula, is 12 seats. The report of 2016, laid in the parliament on the 8th of October 2016, that was preceding the election of 2017. They said there was no real increase, 12 electoral districts. Last year, they went to the parliament in October again, because each, every four years, they have to go and they lay this report in the parliament. And last year, on the 8th of October, they laid the 12th report, and they said the same thing. But somehow, Rowley decided he wanted 15 seats, and they could have laid a report eight months after. Today, in the Sunday Express, Martin Daly, senior counsel states, in relation to the increase of seats in the THE, and in response to other legitimate inquiries about the basis decision it, it makes, the Election and Boundaries Commission has not been forthcoming as it should. I am yet to understand the constitutional basis on which the government could require the EBC to make boundary changes in Tobago, simply in order to break the 6-6 six -six electoral tie that occurred in January. Fortunately, he continues, the legitimacy of an election and the pushback of the people of Tobago against being force-fed with, legis le with legislative changes triumphed against another possible compromise of constitutional principle. He said that today. He didn't say that in January. You understand? But Tobago pushed back and mouth open and Tory jump out. That is what happened there today. So the, the, the EBC disregarded their constitutionally protected constitutional defined role in full compliance with King Bokassa, who identifies as a dictator. The dramatic takedown and repudiation of Rowley's hostile takeover of our democratic principles, the polluting of our independent institutions, the lack of concerns and care for citizens, the callous closure of petrol trains, the total failure to provide devices or connectivity, connectivity for school children whose parents cannot afford after two years of a pandemic and then explain the fact that people of Trinidad and Tobago are invisible because they're gone in parliament talking about nobody lives here and nobody lives here. So to Trinidad, it was Tobago Shumfer who reminded us that when your own dog bites you, you well bite. And as Farley said on, um, to Rowley, what, as he told Rowley on the night of the 6th, we reject your Tobago autonomy bill. Let this be a strong message that we have rejected your bullying your bullying tactics, the kind of bullying that is part of the political culture of Trinidad is not welcomed in Tobago. We expect you to treat Tobago with dignity. That is a man talking to a bully. And Trinidad, you too must demand, must demand that the Prime Minister treat Trinidad with dignity. So this afternoon, I reassert to the UNC and the wider Trinidad and Tobago community that we stand by the People's Revolution because it is only the UNC and the Privy Council, which stands between Trinidad and Tobago and full-fledged dictatorship. My advice to my UNC brothers and sisters, do not let PNM fake pollsters and media operatives who on the 5th of December in front page spread was declaring that PNM way outside the margin era, they're going and win, they're going and mash up, and as Anil will say, they're going and broke up Tobago. You understand? They said they, they, that is what last week sounded like now. They had in the front page of the papers. The media did not cover the PDP campaign. Duke for them was not viable until about 8.30 p.m. on Monday night. So do not let them tell you that the UNC as opposition is not viable, that our leader is incapable, because that is their new message as they try to salvage the mess called Rowley. Keith Rowley has presided over the collapse and state capture of our independent institutions. So in trying to tell Trinidad to listen and explain in my words, and to those who keep asking for an explanation, I want to repeat as I end the, the lines of sign off from a famous news anchor, uh, anchor sorry, Brian Williams of MSNBC. After 28 years at the network, he signed off on Thursday night last week from his show, The 11th Hour. He expressed his feelings so eloquently. And to me, it was as if he was speaking to Trinidad and Tobago. He said, my biggest worry is for my country. I am not a liberal or conservative. I'm, not, I'm an institutionalist. I believe in this place and in my love of country. I yield to no one. But the darkness at the edge of town has spread to the main roads and highways and neighborhoods. It is now at the local bar and the bowling alley, at the school board and the grocery store. And it must be acknowledged and answered for. Grown men and women who swore an oath to our constitution, elected by our constituents, possessing the kind of college degrees I can only dream of, 
have decided to join the mob and become something they are not, while hoping we somehow forget who they are. Isn't that Trinidad and Tobago? Again, Trinidad, I'm saying, listen, right? He, he, when he went on, he said, they have decided to burn it all down with us in, inside. That should scare you to no end, as much as it scares this aging volunteer fireman, a nation unrecognizable to those who came before us and fought to protect it, which is what we must do now. Attribute those words to Brian Williams. The UNC, that Trinidad and Tobago is, a, is our mission, to protect this land that we love. So when Tobago on December 6th told, gave us the message by running the crazy ball head out of town, and they came and they, they say, they say, again, another Tobago euphemism. They say, when they come and they tell, when fish come out of sea and tell you, shark, they there, shark, they there. They ran out a killer whale out of Trinidad and Tobago. And he must have no safe haven in Trinidad. Rowley must go. In Trinidad, we must reject Rowley's politics of spite, his politics of hate, his politics of bullying. We must just reject it out of hand. Anything cannot go. Rowley must go and go now. So you have to keep working, keep your feet on the ground, stand in the gap for our poor, as our leader will tell us, stand in the gap for our sick, our jobless, our homeless, and hopelessness. The youths with nothing to dream about, be reminded that power belongs to the people, and soon, very soon, the people will be called upon to speak. So try not to be able to keep the faith and join the revolution. Keep hope alive, I thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Deputy Political Leader, Senator Jolene John. And you know, she's a firebrand on her, in her own right, a Tobago daughter. And as the old people will tell, the older people will tell you, she don't put water in her mouth to say what she have to say. Keith Rowley is shaking in his boots every time Jolene John mounts a platform. Ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture in our rally, we would like to pause for some entertainment. And to do that, in the year 2016, he told this country to send them a message. Then he told us, talk done. Last year, he told us, now is the time. Tonight, today, sorry, he is here to tell us about the people's revolution. Please welcome Squeezy Rankin and Fireball. The voice of the people Ooh, is the voice, voice of God. 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 The tables yes. are turning, your eyes are opening. Welcome Special to the revolution. People crying out for justice. Uh, Some of them crying out for freedom. Everybody crying out for democracy. Stop it, big. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. I want to say a special good day to each and every one here. Each and every one of you, very good day. The political leader, Ms. Kamala Pasal Bicessa. And today, they say, this is the start of the people's revolution. So I'm here today with my friend Fireball, and we're going to just get a nice little vibe say, All right? So let's do it again, big. It's the, the voice, voice of God. God. The tables are turning, your eyes are the opening. opening. Welcome to, to the, the revolution. revolution. People crying out for justice. Ah, Some of them crying out for freedom. Hey. Everybody crying out for democracy. Why? So it's time to, to make a stand. Pop yeah. it up, why? Hmm. Cause this is the revolution. The people's revolution. This is the revolution. Let's unite and stand for something. This is the revolution. The people's revolution. This is the revolution. So everybody, everybody sing freedom. Everybody sing freedom. Sing it. Freedom. Everybody sing freedom. Come on. Freedom. Everybody sing freedom. Every woman sing freedom. Everybody say freedom. Pump it up, big. As we move in this people's revolution, my brothers and sisters, let's all walk together as one. This revolution is about restoring our democracy. And this revolution is about stopping this creeping dictatorship. This is the people's revolution. Come on, people. What we say? Come on, people. What we say? Come on, people. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, people. We're crying out for justice. Ah, ah, ah. Some of them crying out for freedom. Yeah, yeah, freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody 
everybody crying out for democracy. So it's time to make the same. Who we tell them? Cause this is the revolution, the people's revolution. This is the revolution. Let's unite and stand for something. This is the revolution. The people's revolution. This is the revolution. So everybody, everybody sing freedom. Everybody sing freedom. Man and woman sing freedom. Everybody sing freedom. Freedom. Everybody sing freedom. Man and woman sing freedom. Everybody sing freedom. As we move in this people's revolution, my brothers and sisters. Mr. Robert says, yes, 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 yes. Make some noise. Make some noise for the boys of culture of Trinidad and Tobago. As we begin where the air is rare. Come on, people. Coming to the stage. A lady who began in humble beginnings. A woman who has topped her class at every level of education. She's been in politics going on 40 years. A mother. A grandmother, a wife of 50 years, the first woman to be and serve as Attorney General in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, the best Minister of Education to ever serve Trinidad and Tobago, the first woman to lead a major political party in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, the first female opposition leader, the first female prime minister, and now the leader of the United National Congress, the best prime minister to ever serve Trinidad and Tobago, a woman who rules with heart, who listens, and who can find the best team, the UNC team, bringing to the podium the honorable leader of the opposition, Kamala Pasad Bisesa. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Give it up for the one and only. We used to call him Spoke. You remember those days? Spoke. Anil, give it up for Anil, please. And Squeaky, Squeezy, and the team. Thank you. Wow, what an evening. What a day. All day long, our teams have been out in the field. You'd have seen the pre rally of this main part of the rally but all day UNC activists and MPs have been out in the field leading the revolution the people's revolution can we thank them very much MPs senators activists counselors, all those who've been out all day and so I say good day to all of you those who have joined us via the TV by social media radio all the other platforms we thank you for joining us and indeed, there are some of us here in smaller numbers, but you could feel the vibes, really good vibes coming out here as we go into the People's Revolution. I want to thank all the speakers. I think you all really outdid yourselves today. Please give them a round of applause. Excellent, excellent. Well done. And what can I say to Dictator Rowley today? There's only one thing I can tell him, which all the speakers have said, and which has been said throughout the length and breadth of the country. And that is, your time is running out. Rowley must go. Rowley must go. Your time is running out. People have shown they do not accept your dictatorship and your tyranny. The end is in sight. The end is in sight. So as we continue with our revolution, can I remind you that this revolution is about geographical discrimination. It is about the high cost of living. Our revolution is against the evil property tax. It is about unemployment, unprecedented levels of unemployment. The revolution is against all the blatant attacks on our freedoms, our rights, our privileges. This revolution is against dictator Rowley and his wicked gang of men. And so I want to share with you never has the UNC been so strong as it is today? And I'll tell you why. Today is an historic day, some of us may remember. Some of you have been with us for a long time. But 12 years ago, on December 12th, 2009, this day, 12 years ago, I launched my campaign to be leader of the UNC. 
12 years ago. And it is someone sent me a text early and reminded me of it. I didn't remember. And so began a very historic journey. We went through, we had to work with other groups. We formed a partnership soon thereafter, which took us into the victory in 2010. Now, running a government is not an easy thing. Running a government where you are the only party in government is not easy. But it becomes harder and harder when you have like five parties in one government. And it will remember in our saying, Wade, you were there, Munilal was there, those of us who were there. And you know, sometimes being a mother is a great thing. Because a mother in a home has to satisfy all the children. So at times in that cabinet, we would have people going left, right, pulling, tugging, whatever. And as the leader of that team, I had to work to hold the team together. And thanks to them and thanks to you, we held that team together for a full term. A full term. A full term. We did not collapse. We didn't crumble. And so we kept on with that fight. And I think JJ mentioned it earlier, that after August 2020, we didn't give up. Because we knew that this Raleigh government could bring nothing but suffering to all the people of the land. And since then, we continue to work. Some may have felt a little disheartened, some felt a little disgruntled, and some felt they were total p and they went and put on red shirts. Because they don't understand that to achieve anything, you have to persist, you have to work hard, and most of all, you have to hold the team together. And today, Team UNC is stronger than ever. I thank you all here. I thank all of those who have been out there with us rallying throughout the length and breadth of the land. I thank you for that. We thank you. And so you've seen from since last elections in August, your party has held about 60 virtual meetings. 60, you know. Not one six, you know. Six zero. We had about 60, 60 pressers. We had Dogla politics, but I think that one is the most prolific. He spoke himself. About 170 episodes. With Mr. Victor Roberts, facts, not fiction, about 50 of those episodes. UNC webinars, we had about 15 webinars. Nationwide procurement roundtable consultations throughout the country were hosted by your party. We had ongoing stakeholder consultations with the business sector, with labor, manufacturers, with civil society. We didn't stop working. And always at our heart, as a foundation stone of everything that we do in the UNC, is what we say, people-centered government. People-centered politics. We listen and then we lean. And so all these consultations, your MPs and local government reps, they collaborated with the medical fraternity to organize vaccination drives. I see this Mr. Recusal, Duns AG, talking about the opposition must what? Do what with vaccine? Where were you? Where were you sleeping? Did you recuse yourself from that too, to deal with vaccinations? We were out there, many MPs in your constituencies, all out there with our actors and our councillors encouraging vaccination. And this man, dunce man I've ever seen, the most dunce age this country has ever had, because he's too busy running a business enterprise. They use the cabinet as a business enterprise. Amongst themselves, they recuse themselves. I told you it's like a revolving door cabinet. I have never seen the like of it, even in the worst days of our country. Revolving door, do you understand what it means? When Faris goes to recuse himself, he says, okay, bye, he walks out the door. He goes outside for two minutes, the rest of his partners, the gang inside that cabinet, they sit down and say, yes, approved. As soon as he come back, the door spins again. Next one gone, young, recusing himself. He gone for two minutes outside the road, what happens? Approved, come back, come back, come back. And when he come back, who goes? Rowley. Don't let Rowley fool you, you know, this virtue that he puts on all these virtues like the paragon of virtue. The man is a total con man. He's a total, total con man. 
torture con man. And so, he, as a head of cabinet, is recusing himself from what? <coughs> well, you've been hearing about the real estate deals. Maybe it has to do with that. But he owes the country a duty to tell us why did he find it necessary to recuse himself in the cabinet. Because the only time you do that is if there's a benefit coming to you or your family. They are using the cabinet of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, as I said, a business enterprise to enrich themselves, their friends, and their family. Sir Chung, when you did those recusals, it's over $22 billion was involved, you know. $22 billion. I cannot imagine what $1 billion looks like. You can imagine for $22 billion. I think the one honest Indian in the PNM say he know how much money does fit in a carry box. I don't, I don't know how he knows that. I really don't know how he knows that. But maybe he knows it because he, he also has a property that he probably had to recuse himself, that kid or nothing. Yes, for them to build the overpass, man. You're shameless. Total shameless con men you have masquerading as a government. But I continue to say, your party is stronger than ever. We have continued to help with the vaccination drive. We continue our social outreach efforts. You see our councillors, all the men, MP centers out in the field all day, many days for the week. They are the outreach programs. They don't sit down up in the cabinet recusing themselves. They don't sit in their council meetings recusing themselves. They're out there. And so we see now where the PNM has mashed up everything. They have mashed up everything. They mash up the economy. They mash up the economy. They mash up, they already talked it, the petrochemical refinery, mash it up. I said in Parliament last Friday, that was a goose laying the golden egg. Well, they killed the goose. And they were... <laughs> 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 the TV, the TV eggs too. They thief the egg, okay. They kill the goose. They thief the eggs first, and then they kill the goose. But why did you mash up Petrotrain? Why? Did you do it to protect your best friend? Close down Petrotrain? Because there were allegations against your bestie about fake oil. Where are those documents? And I see you went to court with some case I read in the paper today. And who is your lawyer? Michael Kwamena. Who is Michael Kwamena? Your personal lawyer is the man in Petrotrain, the new Petrotrain. Heritage running Petrotrain, running Heritage man. And they, did they shut down Petrotrain? Rowley, did you shut it down to protect your friend, your best friend? Tell us, tell the people we deserve to know. Tell us. And then, will you mash up Petrotrain? David Lee said it too, Point Lisa's, you mash up Point Lisa's, mash up everything. Mash up the economy, mash up small businesses, mash up workers. No forex, no forex change. Huge charges on clearing items at the port, all so your finances and friends can benefit. You mash up the foreign use car industry too, again, so your finances can be the only ones to sell cars. But poor people know you can't buy a car because you were buying these foreign use cars. And well, we all know, they mash up the police service. And it is very worrying what MP Munlal told us today, where they're bullying these people to control and get their way. And that is why we say we must continue this revolution, because Rowley and his gang of wicked people have to go. They have to go. They have to go. They mash up everything in the country in six years. Well, yeah. And it's reminding me, drive over some lady foot with the golf cart as well. And the other one, I think he bounced on a dog. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't repeat um, what my little JJ said when your own dog bites you because I don't have that Tobago twang. But you're bouncing on dog too. And here we are for the past six years. People in this country have lived under the crushing heel of Rowley and the PNM. They have trampled the economy. Safety and security, forget about that, gone. Look at the number of murders. People don't even talk about that again, you know. They don't even remember the number of murders, the amount of crime in the country. You mash up the police service, mash up the police service commission, leaving us headless 
with no commission of police and the crime has just gone. You have dealt a severe blow to the rights and freedoms of citizens. And so I want to quote here from something I read in the Sunday um, Guardian, the Sunday newspaper from Ralph Mirage. I quote, we are now in one of the darkest hours in our country's history. As I have repeatedly warned, the very viability of our nation is threatened by three fundamental problems. Economic stagnation, and we all know that, economic stagnation, social decay, institutional dysfunctionality, institutional dysfunctionality, Police Service Commission, all the commissions, dysfunctional institutions of our society. And I continue with a quote, all worsened by the pandemic. But tragically, the present administration does not even comprehend our condition. They wasted five precious years and now it's six years. Continue the quote. In government, they will squander five more without moving the nation one inch towards salvation. And this is a line I really want to emphasize from the quotation. We need a new path and paradigm. And there is now a possibility Tobago leads again. We need a new path and paradigm. There is now a possibility. Tobago leads again. So I was just checking um, with my colleagues as we go into Christmas, a you know, famous, famous, famous time, a wonderful time heading into the Christmas and the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, which we will celebrate shortly. And I remember this that the star was shining in the east. And they followed the star. The wise men followed the star. You know where they came from? They came from the south and followed the star in the east where the Lord Jesus was born. And do I say Tobago? We are down south. Tobago is where? East. Let us take the lead from Tobago. They have led the way. They are a shining star right now in the firmament of Trinidad and Tobago. In order, according to professor of astronomy at Vanderbilt University, in order to reach Bethlehem, the wise men had to travel directly south from Jerusalem. Somehow, that star in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child, where the young child was. So now we have first Christmas astronomy puzzle. How can a star in the east guide our wise men who are in the south? And I've said, Tobago has led the way. I congratulate them. Let's congratulate them. They, 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 the PNM, Rowley, in the most obscene manner, they threw hook, line, sinker, the kitchen sink, and maybe the toilet bowl, too. All the things that they went to Tobago, giving away, sharing away. Listen, we're coming for you, you know. We are going to get the information of the monies you spent in Tobago, taxpayers' dollars. We are not going to let you rest. And you have no compliant THA who refuses to be audited. We will file the questions and we will seek the answers. And if we fail to get them, we will go to the courthouse to get justice for the people of Tobago and of Trinidad. How obscene to see a minister standing on the road holding up a, um, a check like this, winding your glass and handing them the check. And she had COVID. Maybe that's how she got it. She was too busy. Spreading it. Standing by a cow in any road, man. You're shameless, I say it again. I am told on the day of the election, on the day just before, they were dropping concrete and cement blocks and dropping everything. Hook, line, I sink, as I say, and the kitchen sink too. Everything. But the people of Tobago showed the fortitude and the strength that they will not be bought. They could not be bought. And so no matter what he did, they abandoned the parliament, Munilal. For the whole of November, abandoned the parliament to do what? Go to Tobago to campaign. Well, maybe if that man had stayed here, the bald head, they might have done better. They may have done better. So it was a total wipeout there in Tobago. And Tobago is leading the way, 14 to 1. I say to Rowley again, the writing is on the wall. You get a wipeout in your hometown, man. You get wiped out in Mason Hall. 
As you said, as you said, when the naval string berry and they pelted in the in, 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 in Garen Sea. I have run in my hometown of Sapara for many, many, many elections. And the day I lose in Sapara, I'll say goodbye to politics. When your own people reject you, come back when your own dog bites you. You have nothing left. You have absolutely nothing left. So we saw the pollsters trying to help them, you know. On the eve of the election, printing PNM 6% ahead. Shame. And they're printing that as call. There's a word for it. It's called um, suppression polling. So that you're telling the voters, hey, they, my fellas are no chance, you know. These, these are the winners. So suppress your vote. Don't better go out. But to Bego, to Bego, we are proud of you. And they try to sell UNC in Tobago. Huh? You going to Tobago, the people want to hear about Tobago. They don't want my UNC and Camilla. I heard a Tobago lady on one of those um, videos. Say, Rogel, every time you come in here, it's Camilla, Camilla, Camilla. Why don't leave the woman alone and come and deal with issues here in Tobago? <laughs> you campaign in Tobago thinking you're fighting the UN. It's in Trinidad. And they forget the PDP. Well, they didn't forget them. Eh? Again, in their most vicious, obscene manner of campaigning, they vilified and demonized the people in the PDP. And in spite of all of that, God don't sleep, only wears pajamas. In spite of all of that, here it is, Tobago Trump. Tobago Trump. So I, I take this moment again to congratulate on behalf of our party and on behalf of the right thinking people in Trinidad to congratulate the people of Tobago for their tenacity, for their fortitude, for their courage, for their determination in choosing new leaders, new leaders to chart a pathway for the future for sustainable development and for transformation. Congrats to the people of Tobago. And in particular, congratulations to Fali Chavez Augustine. I have seen many bright people in my lifetime. And if I say it myself, I think I'm one of those, but never mind. Many bright people. <laughs> and Farley Augustine is such a, a tremendous human being as a person. He's exceedingly bright. And I think that he and his team will lead Tobago in the right pathway. I congratulate Watson Duke, you know. They don't want us to talk about Tobago, but what's wrong? We have good people, we have good people. You've vilified and demonized the man. But I always remember, and I, when I said my congrats to Watson, I say, Watson, boy, you more than deserve this. You swim the waters, you know. Farley swim water, you know, remember that? And I think Faith Israel, the doctor, they swim that water for this. God doesn't sleep, only wears pajamas. We congratulate them. And I also, on your behalf, or party's behalf, I want to wish you all God's blessings in your endeavors. Continue to do as we always say you should do. You put God in front, put your faith in the people, and walk behind. And that's what they did. Their campaign was so clear, the issues were so clear, they really deserved that victory there. So what is even more funny, if we could call it funny for us. Is this man losing his seats at he raw remanded. He even lost them new seats too. JJ mentioned, I sent JJ mentioned here, when she said, listen, there was, a, there was an answer in the law. The answer was in the law that with the 6-6 six, six tie, you could have broken that tie as provided by the law. We put that in. When we in government after the 1818 tie fiasco in we changed the law to say that if there's a tie, you pull straws. No, 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 they didn't want that. So licorice they were. So greedy. They wanted everything. The guys told them, look, okay, well, you take chief secretary and we'll take this. One. No, 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 no. They want all, all, all. And then I'm getting none, none, none as they deserve. So they even lost seats that day. Jerry, I call it Rowley Mandard. Serious fallout. But you see who resigning and not resigning and so in Tobago. That's not my business. That's PNM business. Who resigned? Calendar resigned. Who resigned? Who resigned? Tracy, who refused to. That's the blind lady. Shameless again, will not resign. That's not my business. What is my business is that Rowley must go. That is our business. That is our business. And I'm going to take a little moment with you 
to talk about Agnes Gate Part 2. We promised you Part 2. Let me talk about it a little bit. I'll take it slowly because I don't want to um, take you out of your depth. Take it slowly and let's share it together. So here we are. What is the law? We talked before uh, young MP Saddam and Tim Wayne Mark and several others prosecuted this Agnes Gate matter. And we talked about the fact that Rowley and his daughter, two lucky people, yeah, man, both of them get big, big discounts, hundreds of thousands of dollars discounts, while everybody else was paying a different price. And then the whole fiasco before me and the form B, Rowley, who are you fooling? You failed to disclose it in your form B where you should have put it so the public will know what you own. <coughs> and then another time, I will take you from 2004 to the present and you will see how Rowley's properties have just been increasing. And how do you know? We could never know what is in the form A, which is a secret form. How does the public know? And therefore, how do you assess the accountability? It's through the form B. And therefore, you have been... Over the years, you've been not putting this in the form B. All these properties you've acquired. Did you realize he has a timeshare somewhere in the U.S.? When he was forced to try to save his skin, bricks in, he bring out the form A and we say, hey, timeshare boy, Vegas somewhere. Well, I now have that deed. And another day I'll show you because the U.S. is an open country. And it's good if you happen to have a nephew who's an American lawyer. So I told him, go up on their registries and check it for me. And we found it. Type in the name, you have to go in a particular county. And we did that. So we have that, that D2. So let's go to Ines Gate Part 2. Under the law, it is very clear, where a person in public life, such as the Prime Minister, gets a gift or gets a personal benefit of 5000 and up, as low as 5000 you get that gift. It must be declared to the Integrity Commission. So one thing is he didn't clear the property. But what about a gift? You get 400 to 500,000, almost a million dollars we'd been this man and his daughter in discount. That's a gift. People don't just give it discount. In my days when we used to be growing up, there used to be a store um, down at the bottom of High Street known as Kerpelani's. Some of you might remember. Yeah. Kerpelani's was a place you go and you buy one and you get one free. But this man get two properties a discounted price and brass fit and bull fit enough to try to fool people. So INS Gate 2, you didn't put it in the form. So let us not get fooled and washed away rolly nonsense about form A and form B and whatever and whatever. That is one gate. We unlocked that gate less than two weeks ago. Today I want to open another gate, INS Gate Part 2. I promise you that. Here it is. Let's lay out the facts. It will take a little time. Bear with me. By deed of lease dated 13 September 2019, registered as, and I have the deed number here, Ines Investments Limited, as a lessor, sold to Alan Warner, I'll call this now the Warner deed, a three bedroom townhouse at building block B, numbered unit B1 at Ines Gate, Chirvan Road, and so on. I have the copies of the deeds. The price that they bought it for then was $1.6 million. $1.6 million. Kai Townsend and Kian Warner, they signed the, this Warner deed on behalf of Ines Investments. They signed on the 13th September 2019. However, Alan Warner, four months later, on 17 January 2020, the property was um, in escrow, meaning he, he didn't own it. It was an escrow. You had to pay the balance of the purchase price. Then we come down to a deed now dated mortgage deed, 30 January 2020. I have the deed number. Alan Warner mortgaged the said townhouse with Republic Bank for 1.4 million. Okay. So bought 1.6 purchase price, mortgage for 1.4 million. The Warner deed was released from escrow on the 3rd February 2020, as the full purchase price was paid by Alan Warner. Then the bank released the mortgage on the 13th April 21, paid off the mortgage. Now, 1.4 million in mortgage, huh? but when you're paying off a mortgage before time, a few of you might know about these things, and you could tell the ones who don't, what happens? They have to pay penalties. They have to pay interest. So it's not 1.4 alone, this man would have paid off the bank, that plus. And then, 
Here we come now. Deed dated 5th August 21. I have the deed number. The same Alan Warner now, who clear off the 1.4. Initially it was a 1.6 purchase price. Mortgage 1.4 payoff. And guess what he did? He sold this townhouse to one Sonel Rowley. Sonel Rowley, the daughter of the sitting prime minister of this country. And do you know who prepared that deed? The mother of the said daughter. She was a lawyer signing. Why are you all involved in your family and your business, man? Especially when you have so many questions and answers. You hear your wife name jumping up, your name jumping up, your daughter name. You're shame, Rowley. Why do you involve your children and your wife in this, this state of affairs? If you want to go down that road, go leave your children out there. Leave your wife out there, man. Any man named man will do that. Any man named man will do that. Protect your wife. Protect your children. And hear this now. 1.6 purchase price. 1.4 mortgage plus interest and penalties. Guess what my son will get it for? Lucky Charlie. 1.2 million dollars. Discount again. And then the Prime Minister wants to tell this country he negotiated. He negotiated. What are you, a businessman? Or are you the Prime Minister of the country? Your done sage, you want to tell Watson, you, you can't serve PSA and can't serve the THA and blah, 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 blah. But you run in business. The man Bolf is enough to tell the national population through the TV. He say he exporting. Go to whatever. He's, ex he's an exporter. When you hold an executive position, you cannot be engaged in um, negotiating price for townhouse. You can't be engaged in exporting and running a businessman. If you want to mine goat and sell, well, go, go back and sell your goat. Mine your goat. Mine your goat. And let someone else run the country. And the UNC stands ready and waiting to do that. We stand ready and waiting. So here we are, a $400,000 loss. I think, Anil, if you get that loss, you get wiped out. Most people, you get wiped If you can't take a $400,000 loss, Damien, you could. I don't think so either. You might lose your house. You have to pay your mortgage. It's, a, it's jokey, but it's a serious point. So 400,000 loss here, another how much, 500,000 wells, wherever. And these are the discounts we negotiated. So you see, Inez Gate Part 2. This, many would say, I know Jayanti would say she worked at the FIU for quite a while. Is it the FIU? Yeah. Many lawyers will know, and those who want to know will know. According to Chris, who said, what is it, boy? If you know, you know. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. According to the FIU guidance note on suspicious transactions, suspicious transaction act activity reporting standards. This was updated September 2019. Page 10. It says that a red flag, which points to money laundering, is where a client wants to resell property shortly after they buy it at a significantly different purchase price without corresponding changes in market values in the same area. Suspicious transaction. I call on the authorities to investigate this matter, the FIU and the FIB. Get out there and do your job. Do your job. Suspicious transactions. So I, I've, I've given you the history. So first you have one deed in escrow, then you, pay, you get a mortgage, you pay off your mortgage, then you sell it for less. And then, and then, all the others, not, none of them, you know, only the two Rowley ones, Sonel and Christopher, Keith, Chris, Keith Rowley. Only those two, this 1.2 something, you know. All the others, 1.7, 1.8, up to now on the website, I just get website, the price being advertised to sell these houses is still far more than that. Far more than that on that website. So who are you trying to fool? And then that gets even worse. The suspicious transaction gets worse, because guess what? When you go to look at stamp duty now. Stamp duty. When you go to check the stamp duty that they paid, that stamp duty was paid on the market value which the BIR assessed. So even though you put 1.2 million, they assessed it at 1.6. Again, the discount, suspicious transaction. Alan Warner, he paid 29,500 and so on. 
The stamp duty that Sunel paid was based on market value. And at that time, she had put 1.2 million. So a lot of suspicious transactions to be um, investigated here. I tell you the current website is 1.75 million for one. No, 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 no. Just a few months ago, Sunel bought this for 1.2. So let's not wipe away these things. As an ordinary citizen, you are free to engage in investments and activity and so on. But when you're the prime minister of the country, you have a duty for accountability and transparency. You have a duty, to, and especially when we are talking about taxpayers' dollars. Today, I would um, have more to talk about, but let me just go on this failed health theme, okay? How many deaths today? Another 20 something plus a month. COVID deaths and the cases keep increasing. And we continue the same failed healthy man. 24 deaths. Every day now is in the 20s. You know, we were supposed to do this, this, this rally as a car rally that we'd all meet and we all look forward to meeting one on one again. And it will happen. God is great, I always say. It will happen one day. But we decided instead to do this virtual because we don't want to be responsible for any super spreader. So we will be responsible in what we do and how we do it. And that's why just some of us are here. And do you know, I first called for this failed medical team to be removed when we were just 200 deaths. And now we've gone into how many? Thousands. A few thousands now. 2,400 deaths from COVID. And this failed team is still sitting on there. You know, well, some of these media people really wonder where they were for the last year and a half. Because today I see a, an editorial calling about the same mail, failed team. And when we called for it before, how long ago before it even reached here, they, were, they attacked us, attacked us. Now they say, no, well, they had to rethink this thing. Again, I called for a commission of inquiry into the management of the COVID, a commission of inquiry. Not only must they go, they must be held to account. COVID is not an excuse for government cover-ups. We need transparency and accountability for how these important decisions were made. And you have a one Teddy Al Singh and his puppets. They must go. They have to go. It is clear that they have to go. They're only there to serve their own interests. You put one of your medical people on this team, and then you put her on over five or six different boards. So what is her, what is her focus? When the team has failed in managing the COVID and you're giving them more management powers, what is the rationale? Anyhow, wanted Terrence, I understand that lady coming for your seat in St. Joseph, huh? So, watch your case. We look at the ICUs, the ICUs are like death traps. Some people say even if they get the COVID, they're not going in there. Because the only time you come back out is in a sealed coffin. The ICUs, the HDUs. You had a year and more, and we still have only 52 ICU beds in this country for a country of um, 1.2, 1.3 million. And you call that management, and you feel happy that you are number one in the world. Remember, they were posting before election, number one in the world, lie, 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 lies. Today, yes, we are indeed number one in the world, but for the wrong reason. We are registering the most deaths. Yes, that's what we are number one. Are you proud of that? These are your citizens, the people of our country, dying like flies, you will say. And what is your answer? You send them out there for these press conferences, most boring press conferences you could ever watch. With nothing new, nothing more to see. And how is it can we get truth about the billions we have spent, about the lives lost, citizens who were locked out? Do you remember that? Lock out citizens. You know. When we get back into government, we must pass a law to ensure that no citizen of Trinidad and Tobago is ever locked out again. Let's never let that happen. No country in the world locks out their own citizens. And while you lock out our people, your people, my people, all of us, Delcy Gate coming in in the airport. Delcy Gate, I mean, it's so mind boggling. And where the money gone, by the way? Where does COVID money go now? Where has this money gone? Where's the transparency? Some say it's 20 billion, some say it's 5 billion. Look, you don't even know your own numbers, much less for the population, to understand where has the money gone? We have seen the things increasing, the debts, the cases. Where has the money gone? Five billion, 
20 billion, whatever billion, we come in for you on that too. We are going to come at you. We will not let you rest. There shall be no rest for the wicked. No rest for the wicked. Rowley must go. They must account. All these businesses that have shut down. There we go. Employment. In Butchery of Fasting in the Parliament, those of you who were there and some watching. When Dave Tranku told him about 112,000 people have lost jobs since this government came in, in but come and say no. I think um, Tanku had said it was um, what percentage? He told us that was 450% more job losses. And in but get up and read, well, you know, I used to teach a course at the university which included a component of that course was um, at UWI in Jamaica. There was a component, it was called How to Lie. Yeah, How to Lie with Statistics. So he took one year and the next year, I don't know if he add, multiply, divide. It reminds me of the famous joke which I'll end with now. Hamza Rafiq used to be our Minister of Health under the first pandemic of month. And Hamza and a few of the doctors had to go up to St. Anne's. They formulated a panel to decide um, who could go home. So they asked with various patients, three or four, do <laughs> you remember it? Two and two. Fella jump up and say, boss, two and two. That is Q minus three minus five. Okay, son, you ought to see. Next one. Two and two. He said, that's an easy, easy, easy question now. All I have to do is take the same things I fella just called and I add an extended, and that's the answer. So, Mr. Smart Man, now the third one. Two and two. Easy. Easy pickings, four. Wow. How you get this thing right? You could go home now, you know. Doctors are amazed. But one of them, smart man, might be Hamza himself, Dr. Rafiq. He said, well, tell us how you get two and two equal four. He said, well, first I took 25. <laughs> and I minus 10. And then I divide by four. And then I multiply by three. And that's how I got four. That's what Ember did in the Parliament Friday. How to lie with statistics. Lie with statistics. Over 112,000 people have lost their jobs. And no amount of statistical conmanship will let you escape from that because the people are feeling it. They're on the ground and they're suffering. I close now once more to say under dictator Rowley, more people are unemployed than ever before. And everything you blame Kamala, you blame COVID, you blame UNC, well now take all the blame is on your chest. It is firmly bolted to your chest. The decimation of the economy, health and safety and security, you take it. And you know, any time PNM is in power, everything should not go sound. So fellow citizens, stay safe, keep strong, join the people's revolution, have a safe Christmas, and we shall meet again. God bless you all. Long live the people's revolution. God bless and I thank you very much. The voice of the people is the voice of God. The tables are turning, your eyes are opening. Welcome to the revolution. People crying out for justice. Some of them crying out for freedom. Everybody crying out for democracy. Now it's time to take a stand. Yeah. Cause this is the revolution. People's revolution. This is the revolution. Let's unite and stand for something. This is the revolution. The people's revolution. This is the revolution. I wanna hear everybody sing. Everybody sing freedom. Man and woman sing freedom. Everybody sing. Let us stand together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to see a better life, yeah, share the life. When you use them, no, we get the cry. No big device. If you want to see a better life, yeah, share the life. When you use them, no, we get the cry.
We got that drive, no big device. If you want to see a better life, yeah, share the life. When you use them, no, we got that drive. Democracy in this country. 